Welcome to Deep Dive Coding Session. Today we'll talk about globalization. But what does globalization mean? Globalization means the way to manage multiple cultures when you designed, or developed a software. It's very important to take account of this constraint sooner rather than later. Over different sessions, we'll see how to solve problems caused by globalization. We will divide problems into three types. Translation, how to translate text in the user language. Cultural specificity, how to format dates, currency, text in the user culture. Time zones, how to convert dates in the user time zone. During this session, we will see how to translate text. The first step will translate the text in the language of your web browser. And in a second step, we will let the user choose the language. I start with the project of the previous session. It's a very simple Hello World project based on ASP.NET Core and Angular 4. First of all, we'll include Angular-L10N library in package.json. After saving, Visual Studio gets automatically source code of the library. So source code is in node underscore modules folder. If you remember, I have to configure Gulp to copy the new library sources to root backslash lib folder. This is what I do by simply adding this line of code. Now, I go to my Angular application, in app.module.ts file. I import the translation module we will use to translate text in the user language, this module is imported from Angular-L10N. I import also HTTP module required by the library. After changing ng module configuration, I can use the translation module from components of my Angular application. The last thing I have to do to use the translation module is to configure system.config.js to include the library. It's just one line to add to the list established during the previous session. So now I go to my application component. This is where I have a static message to translate. I go to Task Runner Explorer. I select the default task and I run it. After few seconds, Gulp is executed and all libraries are moved to the good place. I start the application in debug mode to check if there is no error. Ok, no error but the message is not translated. So now the goal is to modify app.component.ts to replace the static hello message by a translation. I import translation modules from Angular-L10N. To replace the static message I use a filter called translate. My component becomes an extension of translation. I add a new constructor with two parameters, locale service and translation service. The constructor will configure those services. I start by calling the default constructor of translation. Then I call the add configuration method of locale service to set the list of languages for the example I take English and French. I call the set cookie expiration to set an expiration date of the local cache. Here 30 days. And finally I define the default language. Now we can initialize the locale service with init method. The second part consists in translation service configuration. I define the path where translation are stored with the add provider method. Translations will be stored in assets folder and files will start by locale minus following by the language code. Then I initialize the translation service.
I create the assets folder at the root of www root. Then I create two JSON files. One for the English translations and one for French translations. For the moment, I translate only one message. The hello message in the app.component.ts file. Now I run the project in debug mode. As you can see the hello message was translated in my browser language, so in French. Ok, the static message was translated but it could be better if the user can choose the language from a list. I change a little the template and I add a select markup with two options English and in French FR. I put a listener to the change event to call the onChange method. This method will update the locale service to change the current language. I put a style on the select with a class attribute. I define a variable to store the locale service. I store the locale service in the constructor. Then I create the onChange method with two arguments the locale service and the new language code. I change the current language by calling the set current language of the locale service. Now I run the project. A list box is now available and I can change the language. The change is applied immediately. Ok the user can select the current language from a list, but this list is hard coded. I would prefer to initialize my list box with languages defined in my locale service. I replace my hard coded list by an ng for instruction. I create an option markup for each language in my available languages. The value of this option is the language code. I display a translation of the language code. In order to reflect the default value of my locale service, I map a model and I set it to the current language. To avoid wasting time, I modified the translation files beforehand to insert the translations of language codes. Now I can run the project. My list box is built dynamically and the user can change the current language. During this session we have learned how to use the L10N library to translate static messages. And how to configure this library to let the user choose his language. Thank you for watching this video.